Hello guys, it's Unders, and I hope the day is finding you well. So today we're in Logic, and what I'm going to look to do today is just teach you how to use the ES2 just to build a re-space for a drum and bass track. The sound we've built up is this here. And as you can see, we're using no processing apart from a compressor just to let that kick drum breathe through a little bit. So once you've got this as your basis and you know what you're doing in the synth, you can adjust it as you like to your track and your particular notes and also then have the ability to apply other effects to it as well. So what we'll do, we'll just copy the channel with Command and D. That's going to give us exactly the same over on here, just with no notes, we'll copy our notes down as well. What we'll do is we'll open up the new ES2 here. We're going to mute the previous one. And what we'll do, we'll default the patch just so I can go through creating it with you. So if we recall default. So now we're just going to have the default saw wave. Not ideal. Now there's a couple of things we need to set up and change to make sure this works properly. Firstly, right at the top, it's in poly by default. We want it in mono, and we also want the voices to be in unison. So now we're at this stage. Big change already. Now we've used the distortion over here on the output, somewhere around that 6.2 dB mark. starting it just a little bit there. Now the analog tune somewhere between like the 700 and full seems to work quite nicely for these sorts of sounds. And if we make use of the CBD as well to about 50%, that gives us some variation per hit. So it's not always an exact replica. So just have a quick listen to that off. Yeah, every hit's a, an exact same replica. This just gives us a bit of difference between the two without really explaining what it does. Each hit's gonna sound a little bit different. Then it's good if we make use of the cutoff and resonance here. If we push the resonance sort of quarter of the way up, uh, make sure we're on low here, and we're gonna keep the blend all the way over to the left if it isn't already. Uh, we can use some drive in there as well. Something else to do is turn off the target here in the automation and as well on the output here, I tend to go for a little bit of brightness as well. So we've got a little bit of extra high end, and even though we're going to cut it out here with the filter, it means when we automate it, it brings a little bit back out to it. Uh, we want to get rid of you guys as well. We don't want the ADSR affecting our cutoff. And that right there is the real basis of our Nasty Reese made in, what, about a minute, a minute and a half there. A um, couple of things we can look at doing if we want it to come in a little bit slower and give us some more space for the drums. Just bring the attack time up to, say, somewhere around 13 milliseconds. And while it doesn't give a huge perception in difference, you'll find your drums can get through a little bit easier. Yeah, it just lets the transients get through when you've uh, got a, a note dropping right in where the drums are, which happens quite a lot. Just making use of that can be pretty useful. Um, generally, you want to keep sustain up to full, otherwise we get this sort of thing. Where it's just dipping away, we just want pure aggressive noise. And as well, if you've got lots of really quick notes like we've got here, it can help to bring the range down a bit. And that is it. That is the really easy way in the ES2 to build up a big resound in just a couple of minutes. If you don't want to recreate the patch and you want to download it, it will be available for download from the Warrior Sounds website. I will see you on the next one.